Hey there Aquarius, welcome back to my channel. If you enjoy my readings, please be sure to like and subscribe, as well as leave me a comment and let me know if this reading resonates with you. Alright, so tonight we're going to do a full reading. And we're going to start out with the Divine Feather Messenger, which is the birds. So what's your central and present issue, Aquarius? Central and present issue. Love, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Sun, moon, rising, Venus. Alright, so your central and present issue. We've got the bluebird. You are being gifted with the blessings of happiness and peace. So that is your central and present issue. Okay, so if that's your issue, then maybe you're trying to feel this happiness and peace, but you're having trouble feeling it. So what's crossing you? What's crossing you, Aquarius? Sun, moon, rise, and Venus for Aquarius guides, ancestors, please send us some messages for Aquarius, send us some messages for Aquarius, Venus, sun, moon, rising, Venus, alright, we've got the robin, what's crossing you, new growth and potential is on the horizon, reach out and embrace it. Alright, so there may be something that you're trying to accomplish, and it's just out of reach. But it says reach out and embrace it. So you might not be willing to, or, or able, or feeling like you need to reach out, but go ahead and do it. That's what's crossing you, communication. Alright, so in your recent past, in your recent past, what, what have you been dealing with, Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus... For your love life, Aquarius. Alright, we've got the con the condor. Hold the highest vision for your life. You now possess the ability to move past any hurdle. Okay, so you may have had a really rough past, but it's giving you the strength to move forward, okay? Any hurdles in your way, best outcome. Alright, so for your best outcome, Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, this is for your love life, this is for your future. Guides, send us a message for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, the turkey. Honor your own time of harvest. Offer your gifts and blessings as a service to the greater good. Alright, that's your best outcome. Alright, so if you're holding back and blessing the world with your help, your assistance, your guidance, don't hold back anymore, okay? Honor your own time of harvest for your future. Aquarius, for your future. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Aquarius. Send us a message for Aquarius for their future. Alright, we've got the parrot. Alright, so you've got someone in your future, very talkative person. Maybe someone that will mirror you. It says, let go of others' thoughts and opinions. It is time to embrace who you really are. Alright, so sometimes we, we allow what other people think of us to guide us in a negative connotation. So don't allow other people's thoughts or opinions of us to slow us down or stop us in our tracks, okay? It doesn't matter what other people think. You have to do for you, not for everybody else. Alright, and then the 
Eagle. Okay, this one, we all know this is all about freedom, right? So this is a factors affecting your situation. You are learning all aspects of spiritual connection and reaching new heights. All right, so you have a new higher vibration, new freedom. Um, your external influences. Let's see what's what's uh, what's affecting you. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. This is for love. This is for my Aquarians. Please send us a message for Aquarius. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. The Blackbird. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Take these broken wings and learn to fly. The magical and unique qualities of your untapped potential are unfolding now. Alright, Blackbird. Take these broken wings and learn to fly. The Beatles. Everybody loves the Beatles, right? Hopes and fears. Hopes and fears. Alright, Aquarius. Hopes and fears. What are we afraid of? What are we hoping for? What are we trying to accomplish? Love, sun, moon, rise, and Venus. Alright, we've got the falcon. Alright, the falcon. Use your keen perception and skill to make decisions. Do not delay. Do not delay. Don't let your hopes or your fears slow you down or stop you if you're trying to accomplish something, okay? Use your perception and skill in making decisions. Do not delay, okay? This is for your final outcome. The white turkey. The white turkey. The power to heal the earth is within you. All right, final outcome. So I guess that has to do with like the mentality that we can't change the world. You can, of course you can. Um, set an example, you know, um, set an example for those, uh, um, who are around you that need this guidance, okay? Set a good example for them. Alright, so we're gonna pull some cards for astrology, central and present issue. So this has the bluebird right there in your central and present issue, which to me represents, I mean, for me it represents death, because the bluebird was what my mom told me she would be if I ever saw her. Um, a bluebird or a robin, which are both right there in your central and present issue or what's crossing you. So this might represent someone who's passed, a past loved one for you. Um, Libra, next to the bluebird. Alright, so you may have a Libra in your life. Libra is all about balance. Libra is all about um, balancing the scales. You know, nothing can be off balance. If someone has wronged you, then the balance must be restored in order for you and this person to move forward. All right, for the robin under what's crossing you, it says new growth and potential is on the way. Reach out and embrace it. All right, so let's see what's crossing you. Along with the robin. What is crossing you? So I don't know if you've ever seen a robin in the yard, but they are quite vicious. They will, you know, um, so actually like the bluebird reminds me of my mom the most, but the robin was what she had said that if you ever see a robin, just know it's me. So these always remind me of lost loved ones, someone in your life who you've lost, all right, so let's see what what's crossing you with these astrological. 
We've got the waning gibbous moon. Let's take a look at that one. I do not know what that means right off the top of my head. But luckily these cards are super easy to find in the book. I love this book. It's so cute. And this is for your um, what's crossing you. The waning gibbous moon. As the moon begins to get smaller, you may feel an urge to share recently acquired knowledge with your community. Reflection doesn't always have to be solid, sol, solitary act. Reflection doesn't have to be a solitary act. Communication about your feelings can help prepare you for the upcoming stages. Look at it this way. If someone else's information can help you, wouldn't you want them to share it? You could also be feeling out of the loop or shunned by your community. Being ostracized hurts and you should share how you feel with those around you. This behavior can be unintentional, so don't so don't write anyone off yet. All right, so that's having to do with what's crossing you. Maybe there's someone in your life that you're thinking about cutting the cord. It says to hold off, okay? And then when we've got the condor in your past. It says hold the highest vision of your life. You now possess the ability to move past any hurdles, okay? Psyche. All right. Psyche is, it's actually just about that. It's about your psyche. Um, let me see. Okay. Psyche represents the goddess. Rose, poetry, wildflowers, and butterflies. Psyche points to other people's expectations of us. Who we are and how we should behave is suddenly a topic of conversation. The empathic side of you might be internalizing this, but like the adage says, other people's opinions of you is none of your business. Your intuition is very heightened right now, and as... It's as though you can feel the emotions of everyone around you. You have the gift of sensitivity and this allows you to turn even the worst feelings into beauty and positivity. Lead by example and show that kindness goes further than spite. Your keywords, passion, empathy, sensitivity, psyche, uh, psychic awareness, and beauty and kindness. It also says, Psyche was a mortal who became a goddess of the soul after her marriage to Eros. Who was, it, it was said that her beauty was so great that it enraged Eros' mother, Aphrodite, beyond comprehension. Aphrodite was so jealous that she cursed the land with the plague and said that on, the only way to stop it was to sacrifice Psyche to a monster. While that failed, Aphrodite sent Psyche on several quests, the last of which resulted in her succumbing to death-like sleep. Cupid appealed to Zeus for help, and he turned Psyche immortal so that she and Eros could be together forever. For Greek myth, this one actually has a happy ending. Astrologically, Psyche represents our psychic abilities and sensitivities to others around us. Having experience as a mortal and a goddess, she has a special understanding of what goes on in our minds and our souls. Psyche's placement is in our natal chart also determines how we look for our soulmate connection with other people. Alright, so... That one goes right underneath the condor. And let's take a look and see what um, is your best outcome. Alright, best outcome. This has the turkey card underneath it for your feather messenger. 
and it says honor your own time of harvest offer your gifts and blessings as service to the greater good all right so um maybe there's someone in your life who or some some organization in your life that you feel like maybe you could volunteer your knowledge your wisdom your help to guide others Best outcome, Scorpio. All right, so underneath the turkey and your best outcome, you also have Scorpio. So Scorpio is associated with the death symbol in um, in astrology, the death card. So there's some kind of ending coming for you and a new beginning. Or there could even be an actual death that has affected you. So Scorpio is kind of... Um, um, let me see. The scorpion. Keywords. Death, rebirth, omens, mystery, and transformation. In astrology, following Libra is the mystical sign of Scorpio. This sign is often unfairly portrayed as an oversex psychopath due to the sheer power of this sign exudes. We see a lot of primal forces manifest in Scorpio to the extreme. Passion, anger, love... These are all energies that Scorpio doesn't have the ability to repress or to dole out in manageable doses. Scorpio is a sign most closely associated with death due to her time of the year being connected to Halloween and because she is ruled by Pluto. This allows her to handle the heavy parts of life, but she flounders in the day-to-day -day and more lighthearted areas. She sees things that others do not and as soon as she realizes this as a gift she transforms into a force for good all right scorpio in the reading means that it's time to get your emotions mainly your temper in check it is perfectly healthy to feel anger but it's not healthy to be carrying it around with you all day day after day you have to do um, I'm sorry, it says you don't have to do that to yourself. Don't, you don't deserve to feel, don't you deserve to feel happy? <laughs> if you have been struggling to take the first step in change in your life, Scorpio is a welcome omen. Allow bad habits and negative thoughts to die, as this leaves room for newer, better things to flourish. This opportunity is a gift and... When you do take it, the whole world will open up. All right, so yeah, this is really great advice, and I, I, um, I definitely agree with that. As far as you know, um, you can, you know, if you have a plant and you want it to grow, you have to go out there and trim the old dead limbs off in order for the new beautiful branches to grow, right? All right, and for your future, we're gonna pull a future card. We've got the parrot. You may have someone in your life who mirrors you. And this may not just be you, okay, Aquarius? Because I got this in another reading already, this exact same card in this exact same space. And I feel like this is more about the age of Aquarius than anything else, okay? So this, um, this might be some type of person who's mirroring you um, for some reason. That can be a form of gaslighting, too. Gaslighting is whenever people say whatever you said back at you. The fifth house. Alright, so the fifth house. Let's take a look. So in your immediate future, you have a parrot... And the fifth house. The realm of pleasure. 
All right, Leo, zodiac sign is Leo. The sun is the planetary ruler. You know, um, the fifth house is the area where you find playfulness, creativity, and children. It is the lighthearted and whimsical extension of thine own self. Joy lives here. Whether you are the type of person who enjoys the arts or someone who de derives pleasure from organizing, an oversaturated fifth house in this natal chart can transmute into a person who has a bit too much fun, never really living up to their responsibilities. A person with a harsh or restrictive planet like Saturn or a retrograde in the fifth house may struggle to see pleasures in the day to day. Okay, there's so many planets retrograde right now. So this definitely could be true, especially for Saturn. Um, Saturn, I do believe, is retrograde right now. Transits the fifth house and it can trigger spontaneity. Those aha moments, many of us seem to chase the show up suddenly and are a big confidence booster. For instance, a Venus transit through this realm can bring a renewed sense of playfulness in, ex in an existing relationship. Ooh, a Pluto transit, however, can mean that you need to work through issues relating to int intimacy or pleasure. This is one of the most playful and joyous cards in the deck. Having this energy in your reading is a clear-cut sign that you need to loosen up and have some fun. What activities do you find pleasurable? <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I'm so congested. I had to turn the air off to do these readings, and I'm starting to get congested. <laughs> if you're feeling guilty about doing the things that you love, it's only a matter of time before you start to resent your responsibilities. In the long run, you'll be more productive and happy overall if you have a bit of fun. Joy, pleasure, fun, games, and creativity. Alright, so that's your future. That's what's uh, right there in your immediate future. Factors affecting your situation is the eagle. Series. All right, so uh, Ceres has a lot to do with um, some ancient Greek god, but it's basically based on the mother. Okay, so this is the mother card. Ceres is the ultimate mother figure in mythology. She was trying to rescue her daughter, Pros Prosperin. Prosperpina? I cannot, I cannot say it. I do know how to say it, but for some reason it's not coming to me. Prospernia. I have no idea. <laughs> From the clutches of Pluto in the underworld. Okay, so there's Pluto again. So you've got Pluto and the daughter must return to Pluto. Sirius becomes depressed and angry and she begins to die all around us. Everything does. The changes of the seasons is a metaphor for the position of Ceres in the natal chart. All right, and the way in which we approach health, fertility, and life changes are determined by Ceres. As our response to nature and how we grieve loss, when she is well aspected, we go with the flow and things seem to come naturally to us. When she is not, we can be possessive, narcissistic, and needy. All right, so what I really like about this card is it says not to have an emotional binge. All right, so basically that's saying, you know, to not be allowing yourself to binge out on some emotional mishaps, right? Don't let minor distractions get in the way or influence your decisions. If you're going through a low emotional period, do your best to appreciate the beauty of everyday life. Eat nourishing foods, make beautiful art, go for walks, reconnect with nature. 
when your children, when we are children, our parents are supposed to take care of us. They feed us and when we're, um, when we're hungry and take care of us. And at some point we change over into that, you know, we're the one who takes care of ourselves. All right. So then that changes and someone has to take care of us again. So take care of yourself while you still can, right? All right. So then you got the blackbird and the external influences. So you have this magical and unique quality of your untapped potential unfolding in front of you. And let's see what um, astrological sign is associated with your external influences. The second house. All right, so the second house. Um, I want to say that's like Taurus, Cancer, maybe. Taurus. Okay, I thought it was Taurus. So the Taurus's bull is the bull. And the Taurus is very, very hard to change. It's ruled by Venus. The second house is where issues related to finances, security, and personal values live. We have to attract money. I'm sorry. It says how we attract money and how we treat it once we have it is determined by this house. Someone who has a stellium, a stellium, a stellium of planets in the second house can be overly fixated on money and possessions. This can go back and forth between feelings of secure financially and have not having enough to cover their needs. The planet that is transiting the second house can stir up lots of different feelings about financial and personal security and positivity. This planet, like Jupiter, can bring an influx of income, but a more difficult one, like Saturn, can bring a sudden sudden bills or another type of value-based lesson. If you get this second house in a reading, it's time to get your finances in order. Overindulging in material things due to stress can catch up with you and leave you scrambling to pay your bills. Alternatively, if you have been short on cash, struggling, this, um, this is about to change. Expect a pay raise or some type of windfall to come your way. Something, sometimes the second house means that you are pushing your beliefs onto other people against their will. Nothing in life is one size fits all. And what works for you may not work for somebody else. All right. So this has to do with finances, security, money, indulgence, and materialism. All right, and then we've got under hopes and fears. We've got the falcon, and it says, use your keen perception and skills in making decisions. Do not delay. So there's something that you've been maybe avoiding. Let's see what it might be. Saturn. Sure enough, it's Saturn. All right, so Saturn, um, Saturn is, you know, it's kind of a hard planet to deal with. Um, it's very like oppression. It has to do with oppression. And, um, a lot of people believe that oppression is something that we allow to happen to ourselves. It definitely can be. But, um, but there's a lot of other people who will deliberately try to oppress us. All right. So this has to do with earth signs, mountains, clocks, sickle, seeds, and gifts. In a reading, two steps forward and one step back is a slogan for Saturn. If he shows up for you, you're probably in the midst of a major life test. 
It can feel like no matter what you do, you just can't get ahead. This isn't actually the case. You are moving forward, but Saturn is just, it just likes to make sure that you are certain of your decisions, of your direction. All right. Um, are you making responsible choices? Are you utilizing your tools for the best of your ability? Make sure that you are clear about these things because you will have a final exam. If you are going through a period of chaos, confusion, or you need to look, um, you need to look to Saturn for advice. What areas of your life can you organize and restructure? What behaviors no longer serving you in your best interests? If you can effectively let go of things that are holding you back, you will have more time to focus on your major goals and aspirations. Restriction, wealth, oppression, work, lessons, resilience, karma, possess, uh, possesses structure and order. Okay, so um, that is your hopes and fears. All right, so you may be fearing something that has to do with oppression, something that has to do with um, structure, rules, social order, um, wisdom of the ages, judgment upon all of us, things of this planet such as karma. So karmic debt is like when someone has done you wrong or you have done them wrong and you have this karmic debt that is weighing on you. Um, you may not even realize that's what's causing the problem, but it's partially like the scales. There's this unbalanced situation that you're dealing with. All right, so let's pull your last card. Let's see what the final outcome is for you, Aquarius. solar eclipse. All right, so this is your final outcome. We've got the solar eclipse, which is a beautiful sight to see with your rose-colored glasses, right? <laughs> solar eclipse. The harbinger. A solar eclipse occurs when the new moon is directly between the sun and the earth, and it blocks out the sun's rays. The solar eclipse carries the same potential for opportunity as the regular new moon, but it does come with a warning that you will reap three times what you sow. So go forward with a clear purpose, all right, because whatever you put out, you will get three times. All right, so let's go ahead and pull you a manifestation card for this final outcome. We've got the white turkey for your final outcome. It says, power... The power to heal the earth is within you. And the lunar eclipse, uh, the solar eclipse, says that you will reap three times what you sow. So if you're planting seeds of your future, your growth, maybe your own business, maybe your own something that's like a side hustle, a side gig, something to get you away from your nine to five, how do we manifest whatever it is that you're dreaming of? Strong vibes, happy lives. Strong vibes, happy lives. All right, tearing each other down is not the answer. Strong vibes is most definitely the answer. All right, and we're going to pull one more for your central and present issue. What can we do to manifest this? Um, you've got the bluebird. In your central and present issue, it says that you are being gifted with blessings of happiness and peace. And Libra. Libra being that you need to balance something out. Alright, so let's see what we can do to manifest this balance in our life. Sun, moon, rising, Venus. This is for your love life, Aquarius. Emotion. 
creates new transitions. Emotion. So you may have some type of emotional baggage that you're carrying around. It could be something that you've bottled up, something you've put on the back burner, something that's floating around in your subconscious, giving you dirty dreams, bad nightmares, things that make you want to cry. All right, those subconscious things, those emotions that we bury can control us and can make us say things and do things that are not our self if we do not deal with them. All right, so this can be like not dealing with the death of a loved one, not dealing with uh, traumas, uh, trauma bonded love situations. Maybe you have a lot in common with this person, but something's causing you issues. All right, Aquarius, my phone's about to die. Be sure to emanate positivity. Appreciate what you do. Stay positive. All right, Aquarius, come back and see me next week.